Hi, let's talk Helen of this Belina today, shall we? I think I don't have any dedicated video to this beauty here. And I decided to do it because it has never been as big, as healthy, as beautiful as it is now. And I'm sorry about the background noise, it's impossible, doesn't matter what time I will film. Uh, if I'm here in the morning, in the evening, very early, very late, I have a noise of it all the time. Yay! This plant is one of the crown favorites of many orchid collectors. It's a classic orchid, it's an statement orchid that people want to have in their collection. And also, it is a new species. It's not an expensive one. It has been propagated with tissue culture. You can easily find it in nursery. If you have any orchid nursery near you, if the price is good. And if you do want to try it, I would advise you to, because it is definitely a beauty. Not only it is a beauty, there are other things that are very, very interesting about this one, and I'll explore them today with you. One of the reasons why lots of people are crazy and really want to try one Belina is because of its fragrance. It's impossible to talk about the Belina and not talk about its scent or its fragrance. It's not the type of Phalaenopsis that will produce a cascade of beautiful flowers and a ton of them. You will have a short flower spike with a few flowers, but you can have multiple flower spikes, I think, with age and many more flowers than I have here. But I think the main feature, it is the fragrance. I have some sensitivity. It's not any fragrance that I like. When it's very sweet, very strong, oh, I don't know. Most of the flower fragrance, they are not for me. Usually talking, usually speaking, especially orchids like this one, very strong scent for me. Uh, this one, same. Cherry baby super strong that's also not for me this one it is amazing i don't know how to explain that i know that fragrance is something that is individual to each person but this one is so subtle for me it's not a very strong and powerful fragrance it has some sort of citrusy to it but it's like a floral and it is fresh it doesn't get you don't get sick with that and why i'm talking about the fragrance first of all because there are many research. If you look for Phalaenopsis Bellina on Google Scholar, you're gonna find a ton of articles only about its fragrance, because apparently it has very complex components to it, the way that it's produced. And they've been trying to explore the genies because plants, they produce fragrance and different types of fragrance according to the pollinators. So they need bees, flies, moths. They need them to come to the plant and to help the plant to pollinate them, to create seeds, you know, fruits, and to keep the species being propagated in the environment. So if you have a very successful fragrance, you attract more insects that will help you to be pollinated. So you're gonna have more plants in nature. That's one of the reasons why orchids, they became so successful in the environment and they were able to colonize so many different types of environments because not only some of them are extremely bright, <laughs> but also they have very strong, different and complex fragrance that work very well to attract different type of pollinators. That's how they propagate in nature. And this one is definitely a beautiful, gorgeous fragrance. So if you want to try a fragrance, if you have some sensitivity, Maybe if you have a friend that has the Belina, sniff it, see if you like it. If you do, definitely get one because it won't disappoint you. Tells me a little bit more about the plant. First of all, it is a Phalaenopsis. It's not a the type of one that we buy in supermarkets. As I said before, it's a polytylus. It's from Borneo in Asia. It grows on the island in a tropical country. Very warm weather usually in the canopy of the forest so it will have some bright but also filtered light so if you want to grow this plant it is an epiphyte as well 
You can pot it with an epiphyte mix, or you can even attach it to trees, tree trunks. You can have it bare rooted if you have the right condition for it. Very important is for you to give this plant some bright but shaded conditions. You don't want to burn its leaves like you don't want to burn any of your Phalaenopsis leaves. I grow my under growing lights. It's doing super well. I receive it as a young plant and it matures so, so quickly. Another thing is as any Phalaenopsis that you have, don't throw water on the crown because you can have crown rot, you can have stem rot. Try to water from below or be really, really careful when you are watering your plant. It is that type of Phalaenopsis that tends to lean because that's how it grows on trees. So we will grow one leaf after another, but we will try to lean up front. I know that people say that it's a small Phalaenopsis. I don't see it as a very small one. It's larger than my palm, the leaves, and it's becoming a very, very large species. <laughs> Quite impressed. The leaves, they are shiny, glossy, very similar to other polykylos, and they have a round shape to it. What people look for in these plants is that because it has its magenta center, magenta lip, and a whiter type of pale green background, it offers you a beautiful contrast, and it has this type of, I don't know, star-shaped type of melanopsis with some glossy petals and sepals. Something different from this one to the other uh, Phalaenopsis that we have in our home is that instead of when the flowers are gone, they are spent, don't cut the flower spike. It's very important for you to keep it while it's still green because it can rebranch and rebloom in the next season. Another thing is these ones, they don't need a drop down in temperature to be able to bloom. Usually they will bloom for you when it's warm. In Europe, especially where I live, they tend to bloom when it's summer. I don't have a very long summer, my autumn is quite cold, so that's why usually I don't have Phalaenopsis flowers for very, very long. I mean, polykylos type Phalaenopsis flowers for a long time, because the weather here can get pretty chilly pretty soon. But when it's warmer for me, it's when they will perform the best. More than that, it's a very easy to care Phalaenopsis. Each grows flower spikes like nothing, it's full of honeydew at the moment, it has two or three more buds that we will open soon, and it has an amazing, sorry I just watered it yesterday, but it has an amazing root system that grows super well inside this pot, and that's a massive pot, so I have Ian holding that. I'm very happy with my Belina, it brings me so much joy and I want to feature this in this video, I hope you enjoy it. Before I finish, just to tell you a curiosity, this one used to be classified as a Violacea not long ago, until they decided to, one researcher looked into the genies and look at how the plants were different among them and realized that the Bellina was not the same species as the Violacea, they come from, they live in different habitats, they have some unique characteristics that separate them both, so they are not the same species. But if you go not long ago, you probably will find reference that the Bellina was called Phalaenopsis Violacea something Bellina, but nowadays we know that's a completely different species. I used to have, I have a hybrid of the Violacea, but I don't have any Violacea. So I cannot compare, but from the fragrance of the hybrids, I prefer the Benina much more. It's up more to my taste. But let me know what's your taste. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. And I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.